Okay, and then welcome to another real estate video here by the Tokyo Real Estate Man. And uh, we're here in Tokyo today. And I'm going to make this video for the, uh, this is an interesting, there's so many different kinds of like uh, real estate investing that people can do in uh, the world. And we're focused here on Tokyo. Or as I say, we're always trying to, get, when we're investing in Japan, we're interested in liquidity. So we want to be in the best neighborhood. So we're the upper middle Japanese, uh, the upper middle class Japanese or like wealthier uh, Japanese want to be because that's where you're going to have the highest liquidity. Now there's so many neighborhoods in Japan that I don't really know and I know Tokyo because I, I lived in Tokyo for 30 years. So in some ways it could be you could give me pushback to me because I talk about like uh, investing in Japanese real estate but really I only ever lived in Tokyo. So, and I lived in central Tokyo, so the pushback would be, I don't really know. I've never really lived in the countryside and smaller town areas in Japan uh, for longer than maybe two weeks at best. And I lived in Tokyo and I lived in central Tokyo and Shibuya for a long, long time. So uh, really that, um, uh, and I guess you could be argued if you were to give pushback against my analysis of Japanese things that I didn't really ever live in Japan. I lived in Tokyo for 30 years and that would be a decent argument. And I think that I like, uh, uh, I've done well by uh, living and owning in Tokyo because it's very popular with Japanese people. And we're going to look at uh, the Daikanyama Nakameguro neighborhood of uh, that is just uh, west of Shibuya here today and we're just going to look at a few properties there uh, in previous videos I've looked at we've analyzed one but we're going to look at a few and why I think uh, looking in uh, like let's say you're a person that uh, wants mediocre Japanese okay you don't you you don't want to have a goal of having really good Japanese then buying in a neighborhood like this is an absolute uh, no-brainer because you're going to have liquidity. You can keep it forever or you can sell it. And you're going to hear the Toyoko line right there. And you'll see that these two stations here. Let's just go to Nakameguro today. I'm going to click Nakameguro. Very popular neighborhood in uh, Tokyo. And let's just look at all the listings. Okay. Uh, so what's going to come up here? The First on uh, Yahoo. Uh, Yahoo. Uh, Fudo-san or Yahoo Real Estate here. Uh, I just got a little bit freaked out because uh, I own an apartment in a building that looks very similar to this one. So I had a little bit of a heart attack because I thought uh, there was a unit for sale in, uh, in uh, a building that I own in. And you can see here there's a 19-meter apartment. This is in Daikanyama. What is it? In Daikanyama. And uh, that's going to go for 2,000 or 2,300 uh, mon or... I guess about 180,000 US dollars, 19 meter unit. This is a uh, 58 meter unit here. And that's in Utinji, which is just west of Nakamega. Still a very good idea, area I should say, but there is a bit of an escarpment on the far side of, uh, uh, of Nakamega. So that would be where Utinji is. And can. Uh, as, where's this one? This is in uh, Meguro here. This is this one building is in Shibuya. It's called Daikan uh, Yama Complex, and it it's really uh, this building is in a great location. But uh, yeah, there's so the units in this uh, this building is so beaten down that it does it really sits under like the uh, the normal price of the neighborhood. So this is a 105 meter unit going for uh, 5,800 mon. So, uh, what was this one here? This is what, Meguro Flower Mansion? Yeah, this is a really good location right there, but this is, uh, you see, 54 meters uh, for 3,500 uh, mon. Uh, this was definitely going to be on rented land, and we never want to be involved in rented land. You don't want, to, that's going to, like, even the building here is rated 3.67. It's just an older building, right? And whenever the lease is over, they'll rebuild. Or who knows, they might, uh, they might uh, re-sign the lease. You never know. But you don't want to put yourself in that kind of security. Neither do other uh, Japanese upper middle class or well-to-do Japanese people they want to buy in, uh, 
uh, where they own the land. Even in this older building right here, um, Mansion Daini Ebis, it says. Uh, so it's an Ebis, uh, and you're looking at a 59 meter uh, unit in an older building is going to be 6,600 mon, I guess. Which one are we going to look at here? Well, let's look at this one here because, like, uh, th this one is going to uh, pertain to a person who has a little bit more m uh, money, who is probably a little bit more established. So let's imagine that they wanted to move to Japan in the second half of their life, which is going to give them, with just the way, let's just be honest, the way their brains work in second language learning goes, is that uh, it's going to be harder for you uh, to learn Japanese. But maybe you've had a, a very good career and the idea of, of for example, owning a 70 meter, uh, $750,000 US dollar Tokyo apartment in a great neighborhood is something that appeals to you. So let's click onto this listing right here and have a look at it. And we see that uh, this listing here is 8,500 uh, mon and it is in Nakomega, it says Nakomegaro Heights, it's on the third floor. Uh, transportation from Nakomegaro Station, three minute walk. From Daikanyama Station, 10 minute walk. From the uh, Ebisu uh, Yamanote Station, 16, it's a very good location. Uh, close to Nakomegaro and close to Ebis, but also close to Daikanyama. This is about as best a neighborhood as you can get into in uh, in central Tokyo, in the most stylish neighborhood of Daikonyama. It's in Daikonyama, basically. The building has a 4.19 rating uh, from like various sources, I guess, here. Kuchikomi, this you see in the blue here, that's Kuchikomi. That's a good word to know. Yeah, that's just the rating, Kuchikomi, what people are saying. Okay. And unfortunately, this software with Yahoo Real Estate doesn't allow me to, uh, to expand, but here we see the location right here by the river in Nakamegro, very, very popular. Such a great street for walking, a great street for like lifestyle. And it's just to, uh, this is uh, Meguro or Komazawa Dori. It's just on the other side, but it's right by the river. Uh, lots of good shopping for like, what I mean is like, not fat like there's obviously there's some boutiques and that along the river but there's also a lot of good grocery shopping and uh a really uh there's a great vegetable uh, or yaoi as you say in japanese uh, very close to here as well and then uh ebisu is also close to here so if you want access to the yamanote line which is the circle line in tokyo that's there as well and we'll get down into the meat of the, oh wow, you see, this is a non-buyer. I'm so sorry to bring this up. So he, this, I thought it was a good deal and that's why I looked at it. But you know what? Here in the very middle, unfortunately, I can't expand it here, but beside the orange dot here, I'll line it up. This is on rented land. And even on rented land, this 70 meter, uh, 70 meter unit going for, I guess, $750,000 right there. So that explains the, how popular of a neighborhood it is right here. Yeah, so I've, uh, I've, I guess I've tried to open up a listing here that we could look at like a, a possible purchase, uh, purchasable unit uh, as an example, but actually what we've ran into here, which is a great education point here, so right on the line just beside the uh, the, the orange dot right here, we see it indicated here that it is on rented land. So I would say that we never want to be involved with that at all. And we just look at, there's a layout right there. Fairly, like a fairly newer layout on the third floor. But again, it's on rented land. So we never want to be, never want to be involved with that. But yeah, there gives you a little idea. So we'll go back to the, uh, to the uh, what we are searching here and continue and maybe we'll get another one and this is the 84 so we have an 84 meter unit you see I should have been able to sense by the price 70 uh, meter unit going for 750 or 8500 mon but we see here just below it 
a similar aged uh, building, 84 meters, going for 2 million, or you say in Japanese, Ichi Oko Isen Kyuhyakuman, or two, I'm trying to translate close to what it would be, probably 1.7 million US dollars for this one unit right here. Let's click on and have a look. Uh, this is probably like above most people's uh, purchasable price, but you're even at a unit like this, you're not getting maximum liquidity because actually you're probably going at the top end of the market. So in some ways, this is a poor example, but uh, let's say you have a lot of money, right? You've made a lot of money in your life. This is a great, uh, a great unit to own. You're going to live in the best neighborhood in Tokyo. Let's have a look at the map down here to see exactly where it is. Should be here, maybe. Hopefully, I didn't pass it. Did I pass it properly? Yeah, these are going to be similar sort of units. I didn't see a map. I might have went over top of it. Oh, here it is. Yeah. So you see here, this is on the little bit of an escarpment from the river. So the river is in the, the bottom of the valley, and this is going the, up the Albadai uh, escarpment here toward Ebiso. Uh, great location. It's probably in, uh, if we look at the, uh, the Jusho or the address, it's probably, uh, it's probably even Albadai. What does it say? Uh, Granguel, like a Daikanyama. So yeah, it's on the escarpment just before Daikanyama right there. So you're looking at top location, but you're probably not looking at the uh, maximum liquidity because it's a uh, over. It's a pretty high-priced unit. Yeah, but it's nice too, though. All kinds of people. So. There we see even an older building, 43 meters, okay. 43 meters in this uh, Chato Daikanyama. So let's have a click onto this one, have a look. So this is probably going to be right in uh, Daikanyama and it's going for 6,000 6, uh, man. So 42 meters down. Oh, it's a really, I know where this building is, right near the station. This is, a, this is an interesting unit that you might want to own because uh, the chance that this building might be rebuilt in the future uh, is high. But uh, one of the weaknesses to it, like they're probably not going to allow any tower buildings being built here in uh, Daikanyama, I would think. So that's kind of tricky, but nice unit. I mean, I don't know if there would be too much price uh, compression on a 500,000 dollar unit in uh, or US dollar unit in Daikonyama yeah it's nice small balcony let's have a look at the exact location right here on the map down here yeah and uh, I'm it's closer here this is closer to Nakameguro station than Daikonyama station and this is Kyu Yamate door so it's on basically the like I mentioned earlier, the uh, Abode escarpment. So imagine right here, the bottom, uh, there's an escarpment on both sides of this river right there. And along the river is the beautiful walking street uh, in Nakameguro, but this is just up the escarpment. And uh, Daikanyama Station is right there. So yeah, really good location. And also very close, you see right here to the, on the, on the right of the green dot, this uh, orange, uh, station right there is Ebi, so you're looking at a top location in Tokyo. This would definitely give you, I would say with a unit like this one here, you would be maximizing your uh, liquidity and it's going to be the relationship to land to uh, value for what you're getting is pretty close. Maybe 42 meters might be considered uh, too small for, uh, for, for you, I don't know, but um, this one, this is an interesting uh, unit. I think I remember there being like a unit in this building many years ago I looked at, and it was for like a hundred, a hundred and ninety thousand US dollars at that point in time. Or it might have been a, a building similar to it too, like I probably creating my own personal histories and memories in some ways here. 
Continue with our look here at the uh, Nakameguro area. Oh, there we saw, we saw in last week's video, we did a video on uh, Shuwa. And here is the Shuwa apartment. And we see this is the Shuwa Ebisu residence. Okay, we did that one video last week. Very famous development company, Shuwa. We have a 39 uh, meter uh, apartment in Shuwa for sale. Oh, it's on the first floor. That's why it's cheaper at uh, 4,400 mon. Let's have a look at it. Always interested. I do own an apartment in a Shua building, so I'm always curious myself when I'm looking at these uh, Shua apartments. There you go, we see the layout right there. This would be called a 1DK, uh, which would be the bedroom and living room combination or the dining kitchen. Dining kitchen there together is DK. This is Yoshitsu right there with a toilet. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty standard. This is exactly what I expected to see. Yeah, this is going to be a, like this building series, Shua, always in the best locations in Tokyo and uh, has a very good reputation. You can see here, it's interesting what they did here. They have a translucent sort of door paneling or fusuma, and that's going to bring light from the uh, bedroom or from there, uh, even when closed into the kitchen area. Interesting design. Yeah, this is good. You could, and then you could put a, you could easily put a curtain on top here. And uh, that curtain you could use as a light barrier, keeping this sort of translucent door. That's interesting what they did there. I like that. So I always like looking for like, what materials are, uh, this one design in particular in Tokyo with the lighter floors and the dark on the wall has been in vogue now for about 15 years, but it slowly changes. This is a standard uh, unit kitchen in Tokyo as well. This is what's known as a senmon, senmendai, and beside here is for the laundry machine, just to the left of the sink. And you'll see the water source right here. And the drain was going to be probably, you might even pair the drain here with the senmendai or the uh, yeah, Simanda is just basically a bathroom sink. Yeah, so that's what you're looking at the unit right there, standard uh, Japanese toilet with the tank down now. Closet, well organized. Interesting layout. This is a good apartment, and it's on the first floor, so you get a little bit of uh, you're going you're going to have uh, you're going to get the ability to have a bit of a yard and a garden. That's one of the strengths of having a first first floor unit because actually in some ways it acts like a townhouse when you get a first floor unit and Shua you can see underneath the pictures right here you see that the uh, the uh, management fees uh, are monthly or 6,600 yen and the repair fee for the uh, building is uh, 11,000 yen and the Shua buildings are managed very very well Originally, the company was a, uh, oh, that's just the same as them. There's two, uh, two elevators in that building, too. That's good. My building in uh, Shibuya uh, is just one elevator. Anyhow, have a look here at the uh, Nakameguro and Daikiyama Marketplace for snapshots. And again, I think, like, uh, owning in this neighborhood is going to give you the most liquidity uh, because it's such a popular neighbor neighborhood in Japan and that's where you want to invest because you don't want you can if you wanted to own a house in the countryside and you wanted to buy one at Akia you can get that for ten thousand dollars you could buy that you could buy this place here in uh, Daikonyama uh, or Nakameguro and that would s like give you security that you'd be able to get your uh, money out of there, the liquidity and then you could own a place in the countryside for ten thousand dollars but that place uh, will be uh, just a place that you'll always have to go to and it would be basically sunken money it would be you wouldn't you you could get your money out of it too you never know like you could improve it and then it would become uh, popular this is a new apartment built you see like uh, I know this one they built it along uh, it's a along Yamate Do, uh, Dori and it's a 27 meter unit going for 6,000 mon. 
in the brand new building. Anyhow, there's the little snapshot there. Again, you wanna, when you're going into Japan or into Tokyo, you wanna get into the best uh, neighborhoods to give you liquidity. And if you wanna buy a place in the countryside, you can buy that for $10,000, but it's gonna be a sunken cost. You might never be able to get it out. Or if you make it nice, people will like it too. So maybe I'm wrong about that too. You could be the person that could go into the countryside and start making these beautiful homes for the people there and they want and then you go there and you fix it up and you make it nice and then you could you buy it for 10,000, maybe you could sell it then for 80,000 if it's or 90,000 or 100,000 if it's beautiful. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong about that. But you have to find your own model. I'm talking to you about the model that I did. Okay, which is uh, which is a good one in a way because it gives it puts you in the best neighborhoods where Japanese people want to be. Okay, another video here by the Tokyo Real Estate Man as we talk about macromegro. Thank you.